inflection and shape. We're just going to do one problem today. Because this exercise, 3D.1, you'll see I've allowed two lessons for it. That's because it's a mammoth of an exercise, right? So the first four questions are going to be uh, a real consolidation of everything we've done in chapter three so far. Because you're talking about increasing and decreasing, you're talking about stationary points, and you're going to talk about what we're doing today. So it's a great opportunity to do a bit of recap um, and to make sure we sort of understand all the content so far. So we're talking about a point of inflection today. Now, in our last lesson, we learned about stationary point of inflection, which is where it's decreasing, goes horizontal, and then keeps decreasing again, or increasing, goes horizontal, and then keeps increasing. Okay, that's a special case of a point of inflection. All right, so we've got a set of point of inflections. All right, and within that, we have stationary. All right, which is this circumstance and we have non-stationary. Now non-stationary is, um, is this circumstance. Now point of inflection is where it changes shape. Okay, so here you can see it's concave down, that, that part is opening downwards, and then at this point it transitions from being concave down to concave up. Alright, so point of inflection is where it changes shape. Here it's changed from being concave down to concave up, here it's changed from being concave up to concave down. Okay, so even though it's stationary, it's still a point of inflection. Um, this, this part has that shape, this part has that shape, being concave down. And then here, yeah, concave down, transition to be concave up. So that's what a point of inflection is. There's two ways to determine a point of inflection. Alright? The first and perhaps the only way we're going to talk about today is when the second derivative is equal to zero. Okay? So we've got when the first derivative is zero, that's when we have stationary points. When the second derivative is zero, that's when we're going to have all points of inflection. Okay? Then we're going to need to determine whether they're stationary or whether they're non-stationary. So that's what they are, and we find f dash dash of x to find them. Um, and then, like, if a point of inflection occurs there, all right, the, the other thing to notice is that um, when f dash dash of x is greater than zero, so that means when its sine diagram is positive, the sine diagram of the second derivative is positive, that f of x, remember we're using calculus methods here, f of x, the original function is concave up for values greater than zero, and what do we anticipate it will be for values less than zero? Concave down, okay, and we're going to demonstrate that. Right now. So our first example, we've got x to the 4, take 4x to the 3, plus 5. State the nature of any points of inflection, and hence state intervals where f of x is concave up and concave down. So here's our process. Find the second derivative, draw its sine diagram, and then make any statements. Okay. Let's find f dash of x. It's going to be 4x to the 3, take 12x squared. Okay. Now let's find f dash dash of x. It's going to be 12x squared, take 24x. And we're ready to draw the sine diagram of f dash dash of x. First we want to identify the roots. So to identify the roots we make it equal to zero. It's quadratic, it's opening upwards, so it's going to have this shape. So nothing uh, outrageous there. This is what we've been doing the past couple of lessons. All right. The only difference is we've differentiated twice and we're performing the same procedure, but for the second derivative. Okay. So we've got the sine diagram of the second derivative. So the second derivative is going to equal zero when x is zero and when x is two. So that means we've got two points of inflection. Points of inflection occurring when x is zero and when x is two. So just like we did with stationary points, we need to determine 
the coordinates, so we need the corresponding y value, and we need the nature of the, of the points of inflection. Are they stationary or are they non-stationary? All right, and that's perhaps where it's gonna get a little bit tricky to determine if they're non-stationary or not. So let's, um, let's find the y values first, and I'll, I'll just do that here. Remember, we want the y value of the original function, okay? Because we're talking about the coordinates on the original function. So we're gonna put x is zero into the original function, f of zero. If I put zero in here, I'm gonna get five, and we need f of two, which is gonna be two, four, take four times two, three plus five, we have 16, take 32 plus 5 minus 16, take 5 um, minus 11. Okay, so we've got two points of inflection. One is at x is 0, and one is at um, x is 2. Alright, so a stationary point of inflection. This is what we need to do. We need to say, We've, we've discovered their coordinates, we've discovered where they are, we need to say, is it stationary or is it non-stationary? So there's a couple of ways we can check. This is the easiest way. A stationary point of inflection is going to be, the, the first derivative is going to be equal to zero for those values of x. Okay, so what that means is we're gonna put x is zero and x is two into the first derivative and see what its value is. So we have here in our, in our second step, f dash of x is four x to the three, take 12 x squared. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna write this, put, this is just a bit of an instruction so you can see what's going on. We're gonna put x is zero and x is two in to determine nature. Nature of point of inflection. Okay, so we can see f dash of zero, when you put x is zero into the derivative function, it's going to be zero. Alright, and f dash of uh, two is going to be four times two to the three. 12 times 2 squared, take 4 x to 3 to 2, take um, 12 times 4 to 38, and then minus 1 16. Okay, now this is significant. Okay? So, and, and let, me, let me explain. So we've got um, one of the inductions, so I'm going to miss the coordinates there. So we've got 0 and 5. And we've got 2 and minus 11. So these are the coordinates of the point of inflection. All right, let's detail. How did we find them? We found the second derivative. We drew its sine diagram. We've got these x values. We plugged them into the original function because we want the corresponding y value. So that's these sets of coordinates. We have a point of inflection here and the point of inflection here. We go, when is it stationary and when is it not stationary? What's the nature of them? Okay, so this is what I said to you just before. If the first derivative is zero for the same value of x, then it's a stationary point of inflection. Okay, so here we have when x is zero, right, that's one of the coordinates of the point of inflection. We put that into f dash of x and we got zero. That means this is a stationary inflection. It satisfies the special case that the second derivative and the first derivative are equal to zero for the same value of x. Okay, so this is stationary. All right. But when x is two, when x is two, the second derivative is zero, but the first derivative is negative 16, okay? Negative 16 is not zero. All right, so that means this is non-stationary. So let's list those here. At x is zero and five, we have stationary, point of inflection, and at 2 minus 11 we have non-stationary. And that's what POI would be, point of inflection. Okay, so that's like 
a little bit tricky. Okay, it is if um, if the first derivative and the second derivative both have the same value of x, that makes it zero. Both have roots. All right. Perhaps an easier way to think about it. All right. So so we can make that whole argument there. An easier way to think about it is when you find the first derivative, draw its sign diagram. So if we're to draw the sign diagram with the first derivative here, um, I'll, I'll put the maths over here somewhere. So we've got 4x to the 3 take 12x squared to 0. We're trying to solve this, we pull x out the front. Uh, x squared take 3. We're going to have x is 0 or x squared take 3 is 0. Or x is the square root of 3. Plus or minus the uh, would it just be normal three. x and x squared out front? Yes, good point. Thank you. So yeah, x is 0 or x is 3. Thank you. Good pick up. Alright, so if I've got the sign diagram of the first derivative, okay, so that, that's all I'm saying. So if you insert that there, look how easy it is to see now. They have a same root, okay? Because they have the same root for this x value, and it just so happens to be when x is 0, because they have the same root for x is 0, therefore it's stationary, alright? But this point here, this doesn't pop up on the first derivative, which means it's non stationary. Okay, so let's uh, let's answer the question as well because we're asked find the points of inflection and then make a statement about when it's concave up, when it's concave down. Well, it's concave up when the second derivative is positive. So it's going to be concave up for x is less than zero and x is greater than two. And when we're talking about an interval, we include the um, the limit, the limiting point. And then concave down in between those two points. So that's from x is 0 to 2. Alright, and now let's sketch the graph of it on our calculators to show you exactly what that looks like. Pull your calculator out, and we're sketching this function, and I'm going to I might even just do it on the whiteboard. Okay, so we've got x to the 4, take 4x four to the power of 3, plus 5. Okay, so it looks something like this. Alright, so you might need to adjust your V window to get the whole shape of it. But this is what I want to point out to you. Okay, this is our first point of inflection. Okay, it occurs when x is 0 and y is 5. And notice how it's decreasing, it goes horizontal and then it keeps decreasing. Notice how it changes from being concave up, it's got that concave up shape, to concave down. So that's a point of transition. Point of inflection. And then our next point of inflection is that x is 2, y is minus 11, so like here somewhere, not to scale. 2 minus 11. And it changes there from being concave down, so it's got that concave down shape, to concave up. And again, that's our point of, point of transition. And we can see one of them is stationary because it goes horizontal. So this is the other way to check. Stationary, it's going horizontal. The other one is not stationary. Okay. One more link. Stationary point of inflection, horizontal slope. Horizontal slope means a slope of zero. Okay, so at that point the slope is zero. Here's the slope function. Is the slope is zero at that point as well. Alright, so um, okay, that's enough. Let's do question one together.
All right, so pull your textbook out. Let's do question one together. And then we'll see if we can two. So just have the quiz up here, I'll talk about it and you can, you can fill it in when, you, when you've got time. So what it says, it's got these points on the graph, A, B, C, D, E. We're not even told the function here, so there's no, there's no maths involved. This is just going to require us to look at the graph and fill in the table here. And we're asked to indicate where f of x, f dash of x and f dash dash of x are positive, negative or zero. Okay. So let's, let's go through the first column first, which is just f of x, and that just means the y value. Okay? So at point A, is the y value positive, 0 or negative? It's a positive y value. It's above the x-axis. At point B, it's negative. At point C, it's positive. Point D, it's positive. And point E, it's 0. You're just talking about the y value. Okay? Here, positive y. Here, negative y. Here, it's just above. Here it's way above, and here it's on the x-axis, so we have a y value here. Any questions about that? Okay, so in the next column, it's saying, how about the slope? The slope at that point, is the slope positive, negative, or zero? So if we look at point A, is the slope negative, positive, or zero? Negative. It's negative, it's sloping downwards. Okay, so at point A, we're gonna have negative slope. How about at point B? Zero. Slope is zero. Okay, I'm going to stop there. You can fill the rest of that column in yourself. All right. So this, this is uh, yeah, just introducing you to this question. Okay, then the last part. Let's look at the third column. F dash dash of x. And what we're answering here is, so here it's, what is the, what's the slope like? Here it is. Is it concave up or concave down? We know if it's concave up, it's positive. If it's concave down, it's negative. And if it's a point of inflection, then it's zero. So let's look at this point here. During, during that, that region, it is concave up. Okay, it's from A all the way through to C, it is concave up. So that means at point A, the second derivative is going to be positive. Okay, point B is part of that same curve. It's still concave up over that section. So point B is also positive. Point C looks like a transition point, okay? Because it goes from being concave up to concave down. Concave up, concave down. So what's going to happen for the second derivative at that point? Zero. Zero. It's the point of inflection, okay? And then over this section, I'll, I'll fill in this last one for you. Over this section, we can see it's concave down. So both of these are going to have negative second derivatives. Yeah. So if you can finish off uh, that column there. If we, I can talk a bit about it more, but let's um, have a go at question two, three, and four. And maybe we can have a bit of a look at our conjecture later. 